Hello everyone, I'm John, one of the game content designers at Aquila Interactive, working on Gilded Destiny. In today's dev diary, I'm going to talk about the policies that feature in the game. So, what they are, how they work, and the kinds of impact they'll have. Before we begin though, it's worth stressing that what I'm going to show you here isn't finalised. Some of the features will definitely change. This includes the layout and UI, but also the policies themselves and their effects. In particular, the values we're presenting here are just illustrative. The number crunches haven't gone in and balanced everything yet. So don't worry about the size of percentages and that sort of thing. With that out of the way, let's get started. So, as you'd expect from a grand strategy game, you have the power to affect how your society functions. One of the main ways you can accomplish this is through policies, the laws and ordinances that your government puts in place that dictate the running of the country. So here we are playing as the Kingdom of France, just after the Bourbon Restoration. If we go over here and open up the Policies tab, we'll see the various policies that we've currently got enacted. To enact a new policy requires spending a certain amount of authority, shown here. The cost varies depending on how much popular support or opposition that policy is currently facing. Once a new policy of a particular type, foreign policy for instance, has been enacted, there will be a cooldown period before that type of policy can be changed again. As you can see, policies are grouped under reforms which cover a number of different areas, ranging from the military, to the economy, to rights, to sanitation, and so on. Now, it's worth mentioning that for the most part, policies aren't straightforwardly good or bad, at least not in the moral sense, this being the 19th century, after all. But in general, there are pros and cons to implementing any policy, and it will be up to you to decide how you want to run your country. On that note, We've tried to make sure that most policies aren't locked or chained together or anything like that. A few require researching certain technologies, but in general, our overarching design principle is to give players as much freedom as possible. Including, of course, the freedom to make bad choices and run your country into the ground. Now, let's take a look at the policies themselves in a bit more detail. First off, we are currently a monarchy. And so when it comes to the policy determining our head of state, you'll see that we have monarch enacted. However, King Louis XVIII doesn't currently have absolute power. There is an electorate and a parliament, as we see here under electoral system. At this point in history, the French legislature had just passed the law giving the wealthiest members of society a double vote. So at the moment, weighted voting is enacted. So, while members of both the upper and middle classes can vote, the political power of the upper classes is significantly greater. This in turn affects how much some policies are supported or opposed. To talk a bit about support and opposition, it's worth clarifying that we don't represent political parties in the game directly. Instead, each social demographic will have a political opinion, which determines the policies they support or oppose. The relative political power of each demographic, basically how much their support or opposition actually matters, is then determined by a combination of their relative wealth on the one hand, and whatever electoral system is enacted on the other. Enacting particular policies will have an overall effect on government support, shown here. How much support your current government has will also affect various things, like the generation of authority, tax efficiency, your army's effectiveness, and the chance of rebellion. So, with both some sort of electorate and a monarch as head of state, the current governmental structure of France is a constitutional monarchy. The governmental structure of a country isn't something you choose directly. Instead, it emerges based on the policies you choose. Different types of government have different conditions. Some of the more common and flexible structures like absolute monarchy, presidential republic, or constitutional monarchy, are based on just a couple of policies. More specific forms of government, like a fascist dictatorship or an anarcho-communist state, involve having several policies enacted to meet all their conditions. Moving on, you can see that there are policies affecting the relationship between church and state, the laws regarding military recruitment and conscription, and the foreign policy that influences what we think we're going to be doing with all those soldiers. 
As you'd expect for this period, there are also policies determining just how much we're going to let our people openly disagree with our government. On top of that, there are policies dealing with how we maintain public order, covering the development of the modern police force during this period, and policies dealing with immigration and citizenship. Next up, we have the three main policies that influence our finances trade, economic policy, and taxation. Trade and taxation affect other tabs that we'll cover in another dev diary, but in a nutshell, they enable or lock certain options on those tabs. Economic policy, on the other hand, affects how much control the state has over its internal market. This includes whether or not the state can compete in the market by building its own industries, whether it takes a laissez-faire approach and just lets the market regulate itself, or whether it decides to take ownership of everything and end private ownership altogether. That last one being a condition for a communist government, of course. Finally, there are the policies covering most of the major social reforms that happened during this period. As with most of the policies across the board, there's some abstraction. Not every country did things in exactly the same way or called it exactly the same thing. So we've tried to capture the essence of what certain reforms were designed to achieve. It's also worth noting that occasionally, we've got reforms that didn't happen until after the period the game covers. The idea here is that they were still things that reformers of the time had their eye on. So maybe they could have happened if conditions had been right. And if you want to create those conditions, that's up to you. On top of that, the policies are designed to be moddable. So if there's a policy or reform that you want to add to the game, you can. So. Here we've seen the ways you can try to use your country's government to mould society in the way you see fit. That doesn't necessarily mean that your populace is going to want or like your changes, and maybe you'll have to make concessions to appease certain groups, or find ways of suppressing political agitators. Of course, you could also try getting your populace to want the things you want, but that's something we'll have to cover in another dev diary. We hope you've enjoyed this video. And as always, please let us know what you think in the comments. Remember that nothing we've shown here is final, and some of what we've shown is just illustrative. If you want to keep up to date with our latest content, you can subscribe to our channel or join our Discord. And if you haven't already done so, you can add Gilded Destiny to your Steam wishlist. Also, while we aren't actively recruiting for any specific positions, we're always looking for people who are a good fit. So if you're interested in working on a grand strategy game, we encourage you to send us your resume at jobs at akilainteractive.io. See the description for the link. Until next time.